Hello, my name is Jochen Zimmer and I represent the company Nanoscribe. Thank you for your interest in my presentation. Nanoscribe builds microfabrication systems that allow you to enter a design file of a microstructure and then the machine will 3D print that microstructure for you. Who are we? Nanoscribe is a spin-off of the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology and this is where we still are located. We have grown significantly since our foundation in 2007. We have now way over 2,000 users of our systems and we are approaching 1,000 publications that have been done with the help of our systems. We have two additional offices for sales and service support of, the, of our customers. The technology is based on a femtosecond laser, which is positioned with high speed and accuracy with Galvo mirrors. The actual printing takes place inside the field of view of a microscope objective, which we can see zoomed in here. The microscope objective is dipped into a droplet of UV resin, where the laser beam is positioned using the Galvo mirrors. Conventionally, you would expect a UV laser to crosslink a UV resin. There, each individual photon would carry enough energy to uh, excite a photo initiator and start a crosslinking reaction. However, we are using a near infrared femtosecond laser, and that means the individual photons don't have enough energy. Only two photons together have enough energy to excite a photo initiator and create a crosslinking reaction. This can only take place close to the focal point of the setup. And here you can have volume elements, which can be smaller than a single micron in all three directions. This element is typically called our voxel or volume pixel. Scanning around this voxel in the volume, we can now create a 3D structure. Conventionally, 3D printing means the discretization of a structure into individual discrete layers. However, this creates a staircasing effect on the surface, which is not optimal for an optical quality surface. You can mitigate these effects by increasing the number of layers. However, this proportionally increases the printing time, which is not desirable for obvious reasons. This is why we invented two photon grayscale lithography. I told you a moment ago, that the intensity of the photons needs to be high enough to start a two-photon polymerization reaction. This only takes place in a small volume close to the focal point. You can imagine that by changing the laser intensity, the size of the volume in which this can take place also varies. We have developed the technology to change the laser power precisely and quickly on a grid of 100 nanometers in the plane, which allows us to control the height of the voxel very, very quickly, very, very precisely. And with this in turn, we can now get around the staircasing effect at the same time reducing the number of layers needed, because now we can continuously change the height of the voxel to the desired height of the surface of the lens, for example. And thus, with a smaller number of layers, we can create a better surface quality. If you want to learn more about two-photon polymerization and two-photon grayscale lithography, please check out our website, where you can find our white papers on the subject, which you can download after the free registration. Two-photon grayscale lithography has been implemented into our industrial microfabrication system, Quantum X, which we launched in 2019 at the laser show in Munich. It allows you to do all the steps in-house from prototyping uh, via iteration to the mastering of your final structures with the unprecedented design freedom of your micro-optical structures. The 3D printed masters are then compatible with industrial micro replication technology such as nickel shims and nano imprint lithography. I would like to show you a couple of examples of what the technology is capable of. As a first example, I would like to look at diffractive optical elements, which can be printed in a single layer with two photon grayscale lithography. One example is uh, from the company Diffotech Optics from Austria. 
They are producing variable focus moiré lenses by having two diffractive optical elements, which they put one after the other, which allow them to focus parallel incoming light into a single focal point. Now, by changing the rotation between these two diffractor optical elements, they can change the position of the focal point, allowing for a very compact variable focus setup. For this, they need a continuous transition from 0 to 2 pi on all points of this DOE, which we were able to print with two photon grayscale lithography in a single layer printing step. As you can see over here in this electron beam image, if you follow a single rectangle, uh, it makes a continuous transition from the lowest point to the highest point in these 256 layers, which you cannot really see here. In fact, the technology allows you to go even higher. If uh, your calculation method allows it, you can go to up to 4096 layers discretization. Like I said, on a 100 nanometer grid, we can control the laser power, and this allows you for a micron or submicron feature size and, and pixel size of the effective DOE that is printed. You can also print micro lenses with it. Um, the lenses that you print will be very smooth and still fairly quickly printed. Uh, and you have a full design freedom. For example, you can go to very high sag values, high aspect ratio lenses. In this case, um, these lenses are 350 micron high, which is currently the, the highest height that we support. And um, in printing these, you can also get high shape accuracy and high tolerances. You can also combine smooth surfaces with sharp edges. For example, in this Fresnel lens, you have these slopes here, which are the normal optically active lens surface. And then you have these sharp transitions back to the, to the lowest level height. And then again, a smooth rise and then a sharp edge. That edge sharpness can be better than one micron, at the same time allowing a smooth surface with a surface roughness RA better than 10 nanometers. You have full design freedom, so you're not limited to conventional uh, designs. Uh, I have shown you a few more examples here. So this is a micro lens array with a full filling factor of the complete area. These lenses all touch each other everywhere, and still you were able to randomize the central point of these lenses. You can see here that this is not a regular array, but this is a randomized array, which allows you to get rid of the artifacts that come from a, a discrete regular array. You can combine um, refractive and diffractive features, as you can see in this image here. So this is a, a rounded lens that is um, that is higher, it's not a Fresnel lens, but it still has some diffractive features that allow you to combine the, the benefits of both in one single structure. Ultimately, you can do whatever you want. You're not limited to rotational symmetric designs either. So you can print spherical lenses, aspherical lenses, but also off-center aspherical lenses. Anything that you can turn into a grayscale image, you can print with this technology, basically. I already mentioned this, I just wanted to show it once more. The 3D printed masters that you can create with this are fully compatible with industrial replication processes. For example, with the creation of nickel shims, which you can then turn into a micro injection molding tool or a, um, or a stamping tool, or you can make PDMS tools from it for nano imprint lithography and then go into full mass replication technology. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please contact me under my email address.